Greetings, this is Brian Jenks, Weed Scientist, NDSU Research Center in Minot. Today we're going to discuss wild oat and green foxtail resistance to herbicides. In wheat and some of our other broadleaf crops, we typically use group one and group two herbicides to control grasses such as wild oat and green foxtail. Some of these group one herbicides include Puma, Discover, Assure 2, Select, Post, and Axial. The group two herbicides, Raptor or Beyond, Gold Sky, Everest, and Varro. On pages 108 and 109 in the 2020 Weed Guide, you'll find the Group 1 herbicides listed, which are the ACCase inhibitors. You'll see them listed as FOPs, DIMS, and DENS, and that is due to the ending of the common name. Here's the FOPs, here's the DIMS, here's the DENS. So the FOPs would include Discover, Puma, and Assure 2. The DIMS would include Select and Post, and Axial is the DEN. Our Group 2 herbicides would include Beyond, or Raptor, Powerflex, Everest, Varro, Gold Sky, Husky Complete, etc. These are our Group 2s, the ALS enzyme inhibitor. So this is a picture of our wild oat susceptible population. So the wild oat has been killed easily by these herbicides, Puma, Axial, Assure 2, and Select. This is what we want all wild oat to look like. However, in a farmer's population where resistance has developed, here we see Puma, Axial, Assure 2 are not controlling the wild oat. We have very severe resistance. Fortunately, Select is still providing some control of the wild oat. With our Group 2 herbicides, Everest, Varro, Gold Sky, Raptor, this is our susceptible population. All the wild oat are easily controlled. If we look at a farmer's population, however, Everest, Varro, Gold Sky, and Raptor are not controlling the wild oat. We have very severe resistance to these Group 2 herbicides. This is glyphosate, which did control the wild oat. In 2018 and 2019, we did conduct wild oat resistance screening of many populations from across the state. In 2018, we tested 67 populations. In 2019, we tested 57 populations. In 2018, 85% of the 67 were found to be resistant to Puma. 48% were resistant to Axial. 70 6% resistant to Everest, 87 to Gold Sky, 96 Varro. About half or 45% were resistant to Raptor or Beyond. Unfortunately, 78% were resistant to Assure 2, but only 7% were resistant to Select. In 2019, where we tested 57 populations, we had a greater resistance in the group two herbicides, Everest, Gold Sky, and Varro. Now, why is this? Well, one reason could be that we're starting to see a shift to group two herbicides being used. For years and years, we used a lot of Puma, Discover, and Axial, group one herbicides. Now we're starting to see a shift toward more group twos, such as Everest, Gold Sky, and Varro, and we're starting to see more resistance there. Now, I need to mention that these populations were not randomly collected. These were samples that were sent in to us because resistance was suspected. Raptor, there were 77% resistant, Assure 2, 72, and fortunately only 5% resistant to select. For green foxtail resistance, we tested 19 in 2018 and eight populations in 2019. We saw a very high resistance to our group ones, Puma, Axial, and Discover. Only about 20% resistance to our group two, Zevris, Gold Sky, Varro. Interesting, we did not see any that were resistant to Raptor, which is a group two. 63% were resistant to Assure 2, but none were resistant to Select or Roundup. 
In 2019, again, we saw a higher frequency of resistance to our group two herbicides, Everest, Varro, and Gold Sky, and a little less uh, to our group ones. But I, I think what we're seeing here is more people were using the group twos and starting to see more resistance. It's interesting here that none of the samples were resistant to Raptor. So this tells us that for green foxtail at least, we could still continue to use Raptor or beyond in clear field crops to still be able to control wild oat, or excuse me, to control green foxtail. So for controlling these weeds, we really need a diverse crop rotation. A diverse crop rotation as well as uh, using various cultural practices and diversifying also the modes of action that we're using in our different crops. We could use Roundup in Roundup ready crops such as soybean, corn, and canola. In some cases we might be able to use higher rates of atrazine in corn. In Liberty canola we should certainly consider tank mixing Liberty plus Select. In many of our broadleaf crops we could use Select in dry bean, pea, sunflower, and others. In conventional tillage, we could use Fargo, where we can do incorporation in some small grains and chickpeas, peas, and lentils. Axial might still be effective on some wild oat populations in wheat. And again, beyond may be effective on uh, some wild oat populations, but certainly on the green foxtail populations if we're using clearfield wheat. Zidua might be a new option for us. This is labeled as a delayed pre, but Zidua is not very water soluble. It definitely needs rain to get it activated. Something else to consider in wheat, maybe consider a later planting date, take out a flush or two. We know this might reduce yield by planting later, but we certainly know if you have a heavy wild oat population, that's going to re reduce yield as well. Consider a higher seeding rate and a taller variety to help make the crop more competitive. Uh, consider spraying glyphosate as late as possible in your pre-emergence application. For corn, we've got options such as atrazine, Roundup. Don't forget the pre's, group 15, such as dual harness outlook. In soybeans, Roundup select again the group 15 such as dual and outlook in canola roundup and liberty select also don't forget about sonland sonland can be ap applied in the in the fall or in the spring uh, preferably in the fall and to control some of those green foxtail plants sonland unfortunately will not control wild oat Wheat, we talked about uh, Fargo and Zidua. Definitely still consider using Axial Post because uh, a lower percentage of wild oat has been resistant to Axial. In a crop such as peas, we can use Fargo, Select, Post, and Dual. Also consider using barley as it is more competitive wild oat than wheat. So in summary, we need to remember to use diverse crop rotations and different modes of action to try and control these weeds. We need to monitor the plants before we apply and after application to make sure that they're being controlled and maybe have seeds tested for resistance if needed. Make sure that we're applying herbicides to small weeds. We know that when the weeds are one to three inches tall, they're much easier to control. If you have any questions about any of this information or weed control issues in general, please feel free to give us a call. Thank you.